In the final video, we're looking to complete the process, so to take our collated analysis and to manipulate it into a league table format. But before we look at the league table, um, I just want to take you through a mechanism I've built in here. So I've put the goal difference in. That was a fairly simple calculation, but um, we can't just rank the teams in terms of points and in the Premier League, as in any other sports league, there will be a way of distinguishing between the teams if they have the same points. And that's what I've tried to incorporate here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but in another video series on the channel, I do explain this technique. The link for that uh, will be in the video description just below this video. But the idea is, yeah, if the teams have the same goal difference, um, this next column here produces a decimal, so a very small number, a decimal uh, that relates to the goal difference. And then we can then add that number, that small number, onto the bigger number, the points number, uh, to give us um, the points number and a decimal. And that allows us to distinguish between uh, teams that have the same points because the value we're actually using in the rank formula, just here, the value we're using in the rank formula is not the value, uh, is not just the points, it's the value that's created once we add uh, these two columns, which are distinguishing in terms of goal difference and alphabetically, we add the value from these columns onto the rank value and then use that uh, to distinguish between the teams, use that value in the rank formula. So if that makes no sense at all, don't worry about it. It might not be relevant to you. It's only relevant if you need to distinguish between teams that have the same points totals. But you've got the download file, you'll be able to click through it yourself and understand what's going on. Right, moving on to the league table. Uh, so this is what we've got. We've got some nice formatting here. We're just looking to pull the information through. So how might we do that? We want the, the team that's ranked first to appear here. We're gonna to have to combine some formulae uh, together to do that. So let's think about the logic. Well, the rank formula has given, given us a number in this column. And we also have a number in this column at the beginning of the league table. If we could understand where in the collated analysis, where in the collated analysis this number appears, so the number one, where does that appear in the rank column in the collated analysis? If we could get Excel to understand that, we could then get it to return the value of the team that's in that row. So that's the first step. Again, don't worry if it doesn't make sense. Just try to stick with me and uh, work through it. So the match formula is going to help us to do that. So the match formula tells us how far down a range a particular value appears. So we're going to find out how far down uh, this range here, which is where the teams are ranked. How far down this range does the number one appear? That's what this match formula is going to tell us. Okay, I'm just gonna fix the reference here because this range uh, where the rankings are in the collated analysis, that's not gonna change. Um, good, so I'm gonna copy and paste that, just copy paste special of the formulae so that I don't uh, mess up the form formatting there. Okay, so what's that telling us? So it's telling us the number one ranked team appears seven rows down the list. That's what it tells us. So let's go and, you know, confirm that. Yeah, so the number one ranked team is Leicester, and Leicester is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows down the list. So this seems to be working well. And it's doing the same thing uh, for all of the other teams. But obviously we don't want the, just a number to display in the table. We want the name of the team to display in the table. And this is a good example of combining Excel formulae together. So we're going to do, use another Excel formula, a fav favourite of mine, uh, which is the offset formula. And the offset formula gives us, um, well, asks for an anchor point, asks for a start starting point, and then goes away from that starting point by a certain number of rows, a certain number of columns, and then returns the value of the cell that it gets to. Now, maybe this is all coming together in your mind, maybe not, but that presents an intriguing possibility for us because the match formula is telling us how far down a range of values the value we want is. We can combine that with offset to return the name of the team 
that we want. Again, if it doesn't make sense, just stick with it. Should make sense uh, as we go along. So I'm going to start the offset formula here. The first thing that the offset formula wants is uh, a starting point uh, or an anchor point. It just uses the term reference in the formula. And we're going to start our, on U3 on the collation sheet. Yeah, that seems, that seems fine. That's our anchor point. So Excel is going to start there. Then it's going to move away a certain number of rows. And the number of rows it should move away corresponds with uh, the match formula. So we're going to use the match formula there. And then we can just put zero in columns. That should, that should do the job for us, so that it hasn't seen, doesn't seem to have worked. So offset from that point by that number. Okay, just working through this. Zero columns, okay. It's not quite right, I haven't got the anchor point right. Okay, yeah, the anchor point shouldn't be column U. Uh, the anchor point should actually be, well, uh, column, yeah, column C should do the job. So let's try, try the formula again. And I'm gonna change this anchor point to column C. Okay, there we go. So, so it's brought Lester in. I'm gonna copy paste the formula down. I'm using paste special just taking the formulas down that's going to preserve the formatting which looks fine okay and it's given me the teams in an order which i'm hoping is the order that they actually uh, finished in okay so we've got leicester arsenal tottenham going to go to the internet now and just check this got the premier league here leicester arsenal tottenham man city and then down the bottom Let's go all the way to the bottom so you can see Aston Villa at the bottom. Okay, yeah, so this seems to be seems to be working well. So I've combined two formulae together there, the match formula and the offset formula. Combine them together to do something super powerful really quickly. Really nice uh, formula combination there. Well worth clicking through, clicking through the formulae, trying to understand what's going on. Uh, it's going to be great for your modeling skills if you learn how to combine these formulae together. Okay, so we've got the teams in there. That's the most difficult bit. That's the first step. Then we want to pull out information, home wins, losses, draws, away wins, losses, draws, the goal difference, and just outside your screenshot, now in your screenshot, the points total as well. Okay, so how might we do that? What formula would help us to look through a database, identify a row, and then to return some information from another column on the same row? So lookup formula is going to help us to do that. So let's try uh, VLOOKUP, and I want to look up uh, Leicester. That's the value that's going to help me identify which row to pull uh, data from. And the table array is going to be on the collation sheet. It's going to be this whole table. I'm going to go as far as goal difference. And then what kind of reference is this going to be? Is it going to be um, a relative or a fixed reference? It's going to be an absolute reference, this. So I've just hit the F4 key. Uh, and then home win. How many columns across the data array, how many columns across the table is the information we want to appear? Um, so that is, uh, that's going to be in the second column. Yeah, I think that's going to work. And then... Uh, exact match uh, is what we want there. Okay, so it's returned a value of 12, so let's check that. And uh, Leicester 12 home wins, that seem, seems to be working. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this formula across, although I, I am aware it probably won't work unless I manage the references a bit better. So I'm just going to put a partial absolute reference in there, so that means it. As the formula goes across, it's going to keep referencing the first column, Leicester. Uh, let's just copy paste the formula across and let's see what that gets us. Okay, so it's returning the same um, the same value in each column. That seems to make sense. Uh, but what we want to do is control this number here. If we can control this number, we can return information from a different column in our collation table that's going to allow us to build uh, to build the league table. Um, so obviously we could go through manually and just change the numbers. 
change this to a three, that seems to make sense. Change this to a four. We can go through manually and change the numbers, but is, is there a better way? If we had lots of columns to do, that would get a bit boring. Um, well, one way to do it would be to use the column formula. So if you just type in column like this and hit enter, uh, Excel returns a value of four. So what does that mean? Well, it's telling you the formula that you've referenced um, is the fourth column along the spreadsheet. Yeah, Column D is the fourth column. D is the fourth letter in the alphabet. Seems to make sense. So that's interesting to us because that number is going to get one bigger as we move across the spreadsheet. So we could use it to help us reference the correct, correct column in the VLOOKUP table. So rather than having two here, I'm going to say column minus two. It's just that side of your screenshot. Okay, I can't get that in the screenshot easily, so look at the download file, you'll be able to see it. Typed in column minus two there. Okay, yeah, you can see it here now, so column minus two just here. And it's returned the same value, so that seems okay. Then I'm going to copy paste across just as far as here. Paste special formulas. Okay, so that's saying Leicester at home uh, lost six games, drew one. Is that right? I don't think that's quite right. That uh, drew, drew six games. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so the order of the columns here is not quite right. So win, draw, loss. Win, draw, loss. It's going to be better for us. So again, that's an example of consistency of layout across sheets makes things a lot easier. Back to the collation sheet, home win, home draw, home loss. So less than six draws and one loss at home. Yeah, that seems to make sense. Going to delete this formula now, don't need it. And then 11 wins away, two draws, two losses. Leicester, yeah, that seems to make sense. Okay, goal difference. So what column is goal difference in, in the collation table? Well, this is column one. Goal difference seems to be in column 15. So I'm going to reference that column in this VLOOKUP formula, the 15th column in the table. Goal difference 32 for Leicester, is that correct? Leicester goal difference 32, yeah, that's correct. Okay, and then the points total, what column of the table is that in? Points is in the eighth column. So this final formula, just bringing it into your screenshot there, uh, the eighth column, and we know from previous checks that Leicester scored 81, Leicester got 81 points in the season. So this seems to be working well, seems to be working well. So this VLOOKUP formula um, is taking uh, Leicester, taking the team name, finding that row in the table, and then returning data from other columns in the table. That's the power of the VLOOKUP formula. Okay, I'm just checking through this formula, it looks okay. I think the references are okay, so I'm gonna copy paste this down. I'm using paste special because I want to preserve the formatting. Control Alt and V on a PC. Control Alt and V on a PC gives you paste special and then F for formulas. Okay, and then I've got the completed table. So let's test this. Uh, so Arsenal, 71 points, goal difference of 29. I've got to go to the internet now. Okay, Arsenal, yeah, 71 points, goal difference of 29. That seems to work. So let's try, let's try Man City. Man City goal difference of 30.66. Man City goal difference 30.66. Okay, let's go down to the bottom of the table. Okay, that's a poor old Aston Villa. Goal difference minus 49. And then 17 points total. Let's just scroll down this. Aston Villa at the bottom. Yep, that seems to be, seems to be all accurate. So I'm happy with the accuracy there. Um, so this is a really powerful tool we've put together. We've gone from the data set, put together that collated analysis and then presented it in this league table. The beautiful thing for me is it's all dynamic. So if we change some results in the, um, in the original data set, in the fixture list or the results list, if we change a result there, it should be reflected in this final table. Everything's linked up dynamically like that. So let's try doing that. Um, go back to the data set and let's, we know Aston Villa are at the bottom of the table. So let's give Aston Villa, 
Um, yeah, let's give Aston Villa another win. So let's say they beat Man United 2-1 at home. So Aston Villa had 17 points previously. Now they should have 20 points because they've got another win. And a win is three points. Just going to go down to the bottom there. There you go, three points. And you also notice the goal difference has changed. Now minus 47 was minus 49. That's because we've given them uh, two more goals. Okay, so all seems to be working well. I'm, I'm happy with the accuracy uh, there. Okay, so that completes the exercise. So we've gone through the whole process there, learned so many useful things about Excel, lots of different formulae, but also some, some important ideas about structure. Uh, in this spreadsheet file, we've got uh, one sheet for data. We're doing some basic analysis there. One sheet for collation, doing most of the calculations there. And then one sheet for the final presentation of results, which is the lead table sheet. So not only have you learned lots of really useful formulae for Excel modeling, if formula, sum if formula, VLOOKUP, match, offset. These are the formulae I'm using every day in my work. We've also learned some important ideas about structure and structuring Excel files, laying them out, having the data all on one sheet in the back end. The user doesn't necessarily need to see that. All of the calculations on one sheet. We had one sheet to collate all of the data, do all of the calculations. Then finally, a sheet that's really nicely formatted to do the, uh, the presentation of results. And that was our lead table sheet. And it's all linked up dynamically. So if something changes in the data sheet, in the data set, that's going to be reflected in the collated analysis and reflected in the final output, which is the lead table. So that's the end of this video series. Hope it was helpful for you. Hope to see you in another video on the channel.